use uh, Excel to solve for C given a certain Ka. But first, I just want to show you my desktop because it's a picture of the beach in Rio de Janeiro. And wouldn't it be nice right now if we could all be on the beach in Rio de Janeiro? But we're not. We're here. So we're going to talk about thermodynamics. So let me show you a couple of things. One is kcalc, which you've seen before uh, and is set up right here with our favorite water gas shift reaction. So that's going to hang out right here for just a few minutes. And two is a spreadsheet I made myself that I want you to make uh, your own version of. Let me take you through what's happening in this spreadsheet. Uh, the goal of this spreadsheet is that given the same reaction, this water gas shift reaction, uh, if I find, um, uh, if I determine a C, then I'll know what all my resulting mole fractions are. So let me just show you how I've set this up. I encourage you to set up your own version in a way that makes sense to you. Um, in fact, normally we'd just sort of do this in class and I'd let you freeform and we'd talk about how to set it up. Uh, I thought given our distance, it would be easier and more straightforward if I just showed you an example. So I have this set up very much uh, like I liked to draw it in the notes. Here are all of our chemical species in column A. And then going right from there, we have the initial number of moles. And I just said, okay, let's see what happens if we have a one-to-one -one ratio of our two reactants and no products in the initial mix. You'll notice down here at the bottom, I also made a total. That's just the sum of what's above it. Here we have the stoichiometric number, which uh, comes from the reaction itself, as you know. Uh, so we have negative values for our two reactants, negative one and negative one, and then positive three for the three hydrogens, and one for the one CO. Now, here's where it gets interesting and we actually start using calculations. Uh, we have to figure out what is the number of moles at any instant in the reaction. And so that's our initial moles plus nu, the uh, stoichiometric coefficient, times C. Okay, so you'll notice I made a cell down here to be C and that all of these cells then refer to it. And right now I've set C to zero. And so we just see that the reaction has not proceeded. The number of moles uh, at the end of reaction over here is exactly the same as we had at the beginning. Uh, further, you'll see going one over, I have the um, uh, mole fraction, yi. And uh, the mole fraction uh, right now um, is then just calculated as the number of moles divided by the total number of moles. And that's this cell here, which notice I'm not using this cell over here because that's the initial total number of moles. But as the reaction proceeds, this number is, is going to be different. So this is the sum of all of these um, moles here. Okay, and I'm also going to need a cell, I just realized, for pressure. And let's put that in bar uh, because pressure has to go into our K calculation. And I just realized I omitted it. So um, I'm gonna make it one bar right now and I'm gonna work it into our equation. Let me finish the tour. So C, as I change C, so let's say I make C uh, into 0.25, um, you will see that that changes over here, that changes our number of moles and that changes our mole fractions. It also changes something else. Maybe you spotted it over here where it says Ka, so equilibrium constant, calculated based on composition. So what does that mean? That means in this calculation here, it is um, assuming ideal gas, of course, uh, the mole fractions of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the mole fractions of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, which is how they ended up on the bottom. All of this should be times pressure to the uh, total sum of stoichiometry. So I'm gonna put that in here right now. So it's times P, there's a cell for P, raised to the power of total nu, uh, which is right there. Boom, okay. So I'm glad we've got that worked in as I'm using a pressure of one bar at the moment, it makes no difference whatsoever, but we need that there uh, for mathematical accuracy. And I'm also gonna write it in uh, to my helper equation 
Uh, there we go. Okay. There's that. So let's finish the tour. You'll see I have Ka in here twice. I have over here the one we were just looking at, which is Ka based on compositions. It changes whenever C changes. And then I have Ka that I've worked out from Kcalc, which is based on whatever temperature um, I typed into Kcalc. So this is just a static number here that I have copied and pasted from down here, the Kcalc equation. And I also typed the temperature in to remind me what's going on. So let's, uh, let's look at this and see what we have here. And uh, let's hit decline that annoying noise that is interrupting us. Sorry about that. All right, good. So back to here. So I put in just for kicks, a temperature of 800 K and you'll see uh, at a temperature of 800 K Delta G is still a positive number. It is not a huge positive number, but it is still a positive number, which means uh, that our Ka is still less than one by quite a bit. Um, and you're going to see an example of how the reaction goes forward anyway, depending on what conditions we have set up. So uh, put in this temperature and for this reaction, uh, we get a point zero three, three, nine, nine, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I copied that up to here. Um, I also made a cell that's a Ka difference, which is very simply this value minus that value. And it's to make goal seek easier. So I don't have to type things multiple times. So I wanna know what the composition is at equilibrium. I wanna know what C is at re equilibrium. So I am going to do goal seek. So here we go, goal seek. And I want to set Ka difference, so F14 in my case, to value zero. I want no difference between the two Ka's by changing cell, the Xi cell. And I hit OK, and it gets me something pretty close. And you see my two Ka's look a lot alike, so that's good. And now I have a value for Xi. So at reaction equilibrium, Xi is going to be uh, 0.2574 moles. And that means this reaction moved in the forward direction, even though delta G is a positive number. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute. In high school chemistry, they taught me that this was not spontaneous. And so how come something that isn't spontaneous is actually happening? And it's because that was an approximation that they taught you in Gen Chem. What's really true is that Yes, delta G is important, uh, but also temperature is important, and um, which we already saw. That's been uh, encompassed in this uh, calculation. But also composition is important. Um, and this reaction only has reactants in the initial mix. There's no way it can go backwards. We're driving this in the forward direction from uh, the composition that we've placed in the reactor. And you can see this. Uh, in our output. So our output, we get a mix of products and reactants, uh, but that's better off than where we were. Okay, so you see we have about uh, 0.3 mole fraction of CH4, H2O, and H2, and then 0.1 mole fraction of CO. So there you go. And so now I can monkey around with this and I can change things um, you can solve this, since it's one equation and one unknown, you can completely solve this for C um, on your own with your calculator. I like to put it in the spreadsheet because now I can ask interesting questions. And I really want you to put it in the spreadsheet because I'm going to propose a game for us in a couple of days uh, where you're going to want to be able to change things fast on the fly. So now I can see what happens. For example, if I put in, uh, let's say, 500K, um, and I'm going to copy and then paste special. I want just the values. Give me just the values. Thank you. Um, and now let's do this again. Goal seek, set cell there to value zero by changing cell here. What happens? Okay. Um, all right, well, the Ka, it didn't get quite as far down to that level. That's okay. Um, we can see that it just sort of barely goes forward, like we moved a little bit. And it would be good if we uh, moved this 
all the way forward. Um, that is, if we made the Ka, instead of being several orders of magnitude from the actual Ka, if we made it be as small as it should be. Uh, but you get the idea that I can go back and forth between changing the temperature, getting new Ks, and determining what that has to do with C. Okay, so please create your own spreadsheet in a way that makes sense to you. Format it so you understand what's going on. Make it possible also to change the pressure because we want to see what happens when you change the pressure. That's going to be an option as well. So make sure you put pressure change in. And uh, I think this will be a really good tool for you to uh, test different scenarios for this particular reactor. Thanks a lot. See you later.